All right, good morning guys. Uh, today is Saturday, August 20th, and uh, been a little, you know, seven or eight days since my last video update. Uh, I've been uh, buying a few more decorations for the for the backyard patch, as you can see. <laughs> uh, eventually I plan to get a wagon and, and other stuff as well, but uh, that can come later. But anyways, I definitely got a few pumpkins growing. Uh, let me start over here with the, the Big Macs. Uh, I finally pollinated uh, my first Big Macs about two days ago. And uh, it's starting to grow. Uh, <laughs> probably gonna end up cutting that one off. and. Uh, that one off. I mean, I cut those four off yesterday. This thing's really, really, really putting out the female blossoms. Uh, you can kind of see where I've been cutting them off there, and two more over there, and another one there, and you know, all along this vine. But uh, this one, I'm kind of guide. I'm kind of guiding it back over here this way. Cause that's where it gets more uh, more sun over here this one I'm just gonna let it go over here this way uh, that way the pumpkin can grow on this side right here uh, uninhibited but uh man I tell you what these leaf miners are something else they uh, just will not go away they, uh, I see the grub right there uh, yeah, if you see these squiggles on your leaves, they're not worms. Uh, well, I, you know, they are worms. Uh, they're not slugs or anything on the surface. They're uh, leaf miner larvae burying, I mean, uh, eating away at the leaf from within, from within inside. Um, let's see, let's come back over here. And then, uh, I pollinated this one yesterday so it's already doubled in size so it's pretty pretty fast uh, right here it'll have a room to grow you know without disturbing any of the vines uh, fairy tales good news and bad news good news is that they're growing good bad news is that uh, I lost four so out of the nine I'm down to five There's one right there uh, let's see uh, I'm still sleepy and my balance is not good there's another one here there's another one there uh, I've been covering them with pieces of cardboard throughout the day because the sun just hits them really bad the you know the leaves are really small they don't really cover much uh, here's here's two of the pumpkins I lost uh, uh, the plant can only support so many pumpkins and I guess um, once it hit its limit it aborted the other ones so it aborted three and I accidentally cut off a fourth one by mistake thinking it was uh, an aborted one uh, but when I cut it off I noticed it was completely rock hard whereas these were uh, soft and squishy so I'm like oh great I cut off a good one but uh, no worries uh, I got another one coming in right here I'll probably let it set uh, the Jardales They pretty much, I think they've grown all they're gonna grow. Uh, they've already started to change color and the vine's getting kind of hard. Uh, I don't think they're gonna get much bigger than that. But uh, that's no, no problem. I mean, I knew they grow uh, between six and ten pounds, so I'm guessing that's at least a six to seven pounder. Uh, if I could get a few of them. That'll be good. I mean, I know I got three of them. I got that one, and then I got that guy right there growing, and then I got this one growing right here. 
which you know really hasn't grown much. Uh, it's grown real slow. But I got another one that I just pollinated yesterday over there at the at the end of the vine. Uh, the one that I had. Uh, there was another one that I had pollinated there that you could see in my last video. Uh, it just wasn't growing. Um, it was still hard. It wasn't squishy. It was still green. But it just, after a week, it just, you know, it, it grew insignificantly. So I just decided to cut it off. Um, my Connecticut field. Uh, you know, the, there was a pumpkin that had set over here. So here's one that I, I pollinated about four days ago and man you can see how much it's grown. I mean these these things grow fast. Uh, and then uh see if I can get in here. Uh, I'm trying to damage anything. I got two two howdens growing here. I got that one. I got that one. So, uh, okay, sorry about that. My uh, my phone ran out of storage and, and cut out. But but anyways, so that's the the two Howden pumpkins. And then uh, I'll come over here. Uh, let's see. This is my uh, my other Connecticut field. Uh, starting to go pretty good. Uh, I think I'll let a pumpkin uh, set the next one that opens up. And there's one. It's about getting ready to open tomorrow. And you can see the little, you can see the secondary vines and you know their little pumpkins that they got. So these plants are doing real good, nice and green. And uh, the Connecticut field, I got another pumpkin growing on it. I can get over here without falling. Oh, geez. Okay, there's the other. There's the other Connecticut field. So these two, <clears throat> this one, and that one are grown from from that Connecticut field. And let's see. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I'll show you guys the the tomatoes in a little bit, but let me get over here. Ah. So this is the other Howden. Uh, I cut off the tip because um, it wasn't growing, and I wanted to focus the energy on the other pumpkins over here. But I think this one's off over here doing its own thing. You can see it's branched out. It's going this way. I'm going that way. So, we'll see. I've had to chop off a lot of the leaves because they were just, you know, collapsing and down on the floor. And uh, the leaf finders did a lot of damage. And uh, I did see some aphids on some of the leaves. So, I sprayed neem oil and soap and tried to take care of them. Uh, you know, see these leaves are, you know, they're just really bad and uh, what was I going to show you oh yeah I don't know if you can see that white speck right there but yeah I've right on cue uh, the powdery mildew has shown up um, I've been reading that pretty much all of the pumpkins can withstand getting powdery mildew until they get their first fruit set and then their energy goes into producing fruit rather than protecting itself so uh, that's usually when the onset of powdery mildew comes and uh, a few of my leaves have had it uh, a few of these leaves you know I sprayed powdery uh, I sprayed for the powdery mildew um, so far only the Howden has shown it and then the other pumpkins have shown it and I know the the fairy tale pumpkins are resistant to it so I'm not going to worry about it too much and what is this Oh dear, I gotta cut that thing off because uh, I didn't know about it and I'm pretty sure it got pollinated by a bee. So I don't want that thing growing. 
So I remember cut it off. Let's see, it's come over here. Let's see. You see the other jar deal over there? The same thing. I'll show you the one I pollinated yesterday. Is that guy right here? That's the one I pollinated yesterday. Now here's another one of the fairy tales. This guy over here. Uh, these things grow fast. They grow even faster than the than the jar deals. Uh, I got the other fairy tale over there. I don't know if you can see them in the cardboard. Um, yeah, guys, that's the the patch so far. I mean, I'm happy. I got my first uh, Big Max, uh, you know, to set. I got two of them growing, but uh, I'll uh, I'll look at them and see which is the biggest one. And after a week, and then uh, I'll cut the other one off. I'm only gonna let one one grow on here and let it get as big as possible. Um, so yeah, you see the the Jaredale pumpkin. So I don't know. A previous video, I, I said that I had cut off the I had cut off the end because I had stepped on it. Well. It grew a uh, tertiary vine and uh, it was right here and you know you can't even tell that I cut anything off it be pretty much became the, the continuation of the vine and you know it's going on this way it's even got a little baby pumpkin there but probably not gonna let it grow here's where I cut off the other howden like I said it was not growing uh, it's really small and it started to turn into a weird shape so I said now nah, never mind okay and then on to the tomatoes uh, I have had a few tomatoes start to ripen uh, you know the black crims right here they're doing pretty well but I'm still getting some blossom and rot uh, yeah it's just it's just difficult to deal with with this kind of tomato I just can't get it I just can't get it right I guess I don't know the plants look healthy but I don't know let's go over here over here this is my Cherokee purple this thing's bushed out really well uh, I still I've still been seeing hornworms and uh, it's been really bad like oh I can see the hints of powdery mildew here I've been seeing powdery mildew on all my plants. Uh, what the? Oh shoot! Something's been chewing on that tomato. And there's a hole in that one. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm guessing it's a that rat that I've been seeing on the fence. That's that's fresh. That's from last night. Right there on the right. I gotta take care of that. And there's more powdery mildew on this plant. Well, I've two days ago I killed a gigantic hornworm on on this thing. I can't believe they're still around. This moths are still going around laying eggs. Oh man. You see some of my cherry tomatoes have started to ripen. Finally! Uh I've harvested a few of them, you know, a few that were growing right here, and uh, I'll probably pick the rest of these once I'm done with the video. Uh, let's uh, go over here. My indigo rose has finally started to ripen as well. I got a few of them that are that are ripe that I gotta pick. Ooh, that one right there. See the. You see the color on that thing it's nice and red and uh, I've already harvested three or four and you know they're like the perfect salad tomato cut them up in quarters and toss them in your salad and my Cherokee purples have finally started to to ripen uh, I just couldn't get them to turn so I looked at a few videos and uh, one by the MI gardener and followed his tips on how to how to ripen tomatoes and one of the things he said was to cut back on the watering 
and so I did and uh, the leaves started wilting really bad to the point where the bottom ones just died and I had to cut them all off but sure enough uh, the tomatoes started to ripen uh, I guess it kind of stresses the plant and, and tricking it into uh, ripening the fruit thinking it's gonna die so you know it's working uh, I did the same thing with this black per uh, black creme you can see the there's some tomatoes that are almost there I think this one might be ready we'll see uh, this cherry tomato is is pretty much done uh, there's not much more I can do for it uh, you know I'm just gonna let the fruit ripen and uh, that'll be it uh, my kale I harvested a lot of the leaves as you can see and I'm extremely surprised I didn't know that kale can also suffer from powdery mildew uh, as a new for me so I will I will cut these leaves off because I really don't want to spray anything on these leaves that I'm gonna be eating uh, even neem oil I just don't want anything on there and then uh, look at look at my tomato clones. Here is my indigo rose clone that I started from a sucker, and you can see that it's really 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 dark green, emerald green, really nice and healthy. So it's a nice beautiful plant. And then I'll come over here and check out my my uh, black crim uh, clone. This is the black crim clone. It is doing considerably better than its parent uh, the tomatoes are all growing nice and uh, I don't see any blossoming right on these uh, I've had to cut all the lower leaves off because they were getting powdery mildew too so uh, powdery mildew is definitely inf you know infesting the the garden and the patch so I gotta stay on top of it and this is the Cherokee purple uh, got the tomato